that's why they have so much of it. Can I get this conversation? What's that? Can I get this conversation? <laughs> yeah, sure. Pure thorium metal is a, sort of another, you know, you know, horse of a different color. You know, that, yeah. that requires a little bit of work to. It takes a little bit of work to, to strip the oxides and strip the nitrates. So, so you either got thorium oxide or thorium nitrate. One of the processes that we looked at basically was thorium oxide, just plain old <laughs> rusty thorium. And uh, but that still requires a, you need you need to do sort of like an electrolysis process to it to you know rip the O2s off. But after that, man, you got pure little gray strips of <laughs> thorium metal. I got so, to hold some in my hand for the first time. I'm like, holy shit, I'm holding for you. Yeah. Uh, send, send some uh, over to Kate Middleton for, for Brian Schroeder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would, it would just look like... I think, some of the, uh, I think some of the crowd would be interested to hear why thorium problem is a thorium problem from the standpoint is it is it because it's a fertile, potentially fissile fuel or is it, or is it because it's nominally radioactive? I think from a legal liability standpoint it's a problem because it's it's closely associated with with the other two nuclear fuels. So we got blacklisted as a special <coughs> nuclear material and yeah, that's like, the, that's the like, problem. It's like you know you got two evil twins <laughs> it might be a little rough but you know you got two bad kids and like one really good kid and but they all get in trouble together you know and, yeah. and so you know if I'm telling you you know if you had two and a half kilograms of thorium you may as well have two and a half kilograms of highly enriched uranium or two and a half kilograms of plutonium because the regulations for handling it are exactly the same. Even though we know that you know, I could I could hold two and a half kilograms in my hand, I wouldn't care. My skin's thick enough to absorb the, the alpha and not even cause any you can't do that with you know, you can't do that with the HEU. So is this Brownsfield site that you brought up in Chicago here or wherever that was, is that yeah. was that a thorium, yeah, it was thorium field that they found buried there or? Yeah, it was like it was uh, if you if you like flip through the article, it's actually except for the incredibly biased way it was written, the, the facts of it are pretty interesting. You know that Kermagee had this plant, and you could almost like visualize some dudes like walking out with a wheelbarrow, like yeah. <laughs> so. There's like because you don't get much, you know. It, it's like one percent, you know. So in 30 years, they probably I don't know how much they produced, but it wasn't a vast amount. But they they left. Uh, you know, essentially sort of like discrete little piles of, of thorium laying around, mm -hmm. literally like lumps of thorium. Um, Could it be any more radiation than you get in parts of Denver, Colorado? No, or, no, or they're bait. How about like half of Chicago's basements are made out of granite, you know? Right. So there's radon pouring out of their base. You know, these people are smoking cigarettes, eating bananas, you know, burning natural gas, which is releasing radon, and, you know, I mean... But you can't, how do you tell a person, you know, you got more radioactivity in your own bones than you do by, I would let my kids play on that stuff, you know, it's like it doesn't, but people just hear radiation and they flip out, you know, and so they're like, oh, we got to remediate this. And just the paranoia of radiation has kept it. Yeah, yeah, and, and then the regulations, there's no like literal laws or really specific thorium regulations, so they're like, oh, well. I guess we regulate it the way we regulate, like if we'd found a, you know, HEU sitting on the ground. So, and, you know, the trouble is with that. So, so a lot of the thorium in, in, in North, West Chicago that they found, Naperville, West Chicago, a lot of it had, like, wound up in a stream, right? And so people were, like, flipping. I just got to get into the water supply. And, like, I found letters from way back, but even I wrote, I'm like, it's not soluble. You know, uranium's incredibly water-soluble. I mean, it's unbelievable how easy it will dissolve in water. And you can, like, look up the old aqueous reactor experiment and be like, oh, my gosh, they just, like, dissolve. Yeah, you'll find uranium in seawater. Oh, thorium. yeah, yeah. Well, thorium's uh, not dissolvable. You know, your body doesn't know what to do with it. It's not, you know, you can't, uh, uh, you know, utilize it in your body at all. It won't build up in your system. It goes right through you. But, you know, you try and tell people that. I'm like, leave it in the water. It's, it's not going to dissolve into the water. It, it'll stay there forever and ever. Yeah, and what, what politician wants to swim upstream on the radiation yeah. paranoia to, but, but, to de-blacklist it? But hey, you know, if you got a nice career-long 40-year, you know, 10, 20 million dollar year cleanup contract that never ends, never ends, you know, you're going to, you know, if you're, you know, Fred's house of, you know, radiation remediation, you're going to be like, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, you know, so you got guys you know, that have a very vested interest in keeping this, you know, as 
as scary as possible. So it's, it's really a radiation problem in that the yeah, public, the public just yeah. the decision makers don't understand. I'd go with radiation perception problem. I mean, they try and tell your average person, you know, there's alpha, there's beta, there's gamma. You know, alpha's not bad, beta, you know, it's a little dicey, you know. Gamma's the one you want to watch out for, you know. <clears throat> but, you know, you tell people that the radiation couldn't get through your own skin. It won't, like I took a sample of thorium home with me, and I was a little freaking out because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, am I going to set off the radiation? I'm like, I'm going to trust what I've always been told, that a plastic Just bag. put a banana with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I put it in a plastic bag, and it went through, you know, the bag scanner and stuff. I mean, that doesn't bat in a buck, you know, you could probably put grenade launcher in there or something and maybe miss half of them but but it did go through and nobody questioned it well, I've, been, I've been thinking a lot about alphas and betas because I'm horribly <laughs> sunburned right now and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought I gotta remember the you know the limit your exposure <laughs> yep. shielding <laughs> shielding yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and uh, when we do these things naturally for for sunburn you know we take our kids out to the lake yeah. put on a shirt you know yep. stay out all day put on your sunblock you reapply that's and, exactly right yeah have you seen that exposure chart? Like, I think that's the best thing because then they're like, we live in a radioactive world, you don't realize it. I think we should invest some time in some uh, educational pieces on the relative risks of the different radiation. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, sort of like get a very, very condensed version of Alex, Alex's talk. It's real, you know, the EPA, the NRC, folks like that. If, you, if we spilled 10 kilograms of thorium here, it would be... A calamity. They would literally tear the the top floor off of this building. I mean, that's how they would treat it. And they would they would barrel up every single one of these things, and they'd send it to the whip, you know. <laughs> and the whole building would be would have to be you know decontaminated. I mean, that's how they would treat it. Even though we know, I'd be like, oh, I just better vacuum that up, <laughs> you know, and sweep it up. You you'd be interested to visit the exposure lab at the University of Cincinnati, and they've got all these gelatin dummies that they actually blow like plutonium dust and ur uranium dust and thorium dust and they actually see the, the radiation exposure to this like ballistic gel and how it tr travels and they also old uh, workers like that worked on the Manhattan Project will their bodies to them and they they, they dissolve the bodies in uh, HF and, and uh, other acids and then they sift it out and see how much plutonium and uranium and stuff wound up in their bodies. Yeah, it's sort of like donating your body to science. So they've got really, really good, very, very long-term exposure studies of just how much of this stuff builds up in the body. So they know. Yeah, it's incredibly interesting to see these models. So, do you want to cut through now? Sorry, I know it's your job. We're just getting in your way. Oh, you're I'm taking the elevator? I'm taking the elevator. I don't know which one's going to come. Oh, okay. So. We, we know. We know what exposures are real and what exposures, and we know what particle size gets dangerous and what particle size isn't dangerous. But, you know, it gets down to, you know, when the rubber meets the road, it's, you know, you may as well be dealing with plutonium if you're dealing with thorium today. And that's a big part of what Jim Kennedy and I are trying to, you know, that consortium, the thorium bank thing is sort of a way to just work within the, the rules of today. Like, all right, you want to you want us to sequester it and treat it and put guards around it and razor wire and thousand foot setbacks? Fine. Well, until the day that we can like, you know, take the black marks off of it, we'll treat it like it's plutonium, and and we'll treat it like it's plutonium on behalf of the Western world. We make the analogy of like any farmer can go and get a thousand gallons of of ammonia, which you know would kill everybody around it, right, Jim? I agree with whatever you're saying. <laughs> we always use the analogy of the ammonia killing everybody oh, around yeah, it, and any farmer can... Yeah, the Home Depot gardening <laughs> department. Is... Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look what they put in, you know. Yeah, uh, the stuff under your kitchen sink would yeah, be... Yeah. So... Pesticides, all that crap. But it is legitimate. I mean, you don't want just any jackass walking around, you know, and processing rare earths and leaving, you know, trash cans full of thorium and crap laying around. You do want to say, hey, look, a very select group of people get to do this so who've been trained regulation. yeah but it does i think that's ultimately like the orrin hatch read stuff it needs to be regulated on its own 
There right. needs to be like a thorium nuclear regulatory commission. Exactly what we're that working That can on. clean sheet it. You know, something for minimally radioactive rather yeah. than yeah. a special nuclear. Consider this. Uh, the legislation we put together yeah. has for like this. Um, no, I'm going to trade. I've got to go and... Uh, okay. i got to talk to you a little bit. Go to whatever. I'm going to give you this back then. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. You know, hey, John. It John. It does. Thorium Industrial Products Corporation. Um, did you just shut that off yourself? No, I just... Uh, oh. I probably wasn't just on it. Uh, see, the reason I want you wired is that because you introduce everybody. Oh, okay. And otherwise you're not wired for Sorry, I, uh, I handed mine to... Uh, That's okay. I handed it on all the way up.